<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, Jordan, your resident storyteller extraordinaire and master of lore. And I've got a bit of a confession to make to all of you. In recording the second part of this DM guide, the uh, plots and NPCs portion for telling a better story for yourself and your players, a little bit remiss. I forgot some very basic storytelling concepts and ideas that go a long way towards putting together a better story. And that is your beginning, your middle, and the end. And, well, here we are. Let's get this show on, on the road. Now, when it comes to starting a story, the beginning is your moment to hook your players and just get them invested into what's going on. And think of any game, movie, or book series. Those first couple of pages, those first couple of minutes, that's when they really got to sell you on the story and get you hooked into it. Like, take the classic Star Wars, beginning of the original trilogy. You got that rolling text that just starts off looming large and fades slowly into the back. And then it cuts right away into this shot of open space. And you see this ship flying along through the infinite void. Laser flashes shooting back and forth. And then you see a Star Destroyer immediately giving chase. Well, you don't know it's a Star Destroyer right off. But anyways, anyways. Right after all of that happens, you cut to the droids. You see crew members racing around back and forth trying to get to their designated stations to try to... Hope, try to repel the borders I and mean, somehow I mean you see the size difference between this little corvette and this massive imperial star destroyer and it just looks bleak and hopeless but immediately that just gets you rooted and it's like oh crap we're watching the underdogs here and you just go right into it or even take a let's take a more recent example and take a look at uh, Avengers Infinity War the movie doesn't even start off with an exposition dump with all the text uh, they assume you just know what's going on and you just dive right into it. And even if you're a newcomer to the series, uh, to the Marvel Studios uh, Cinematic Universe, you ju just watching that opening, you they make it very clear visually setting the scene and letting you know exactly who the heroes are and who the villains are. And you just get sucked right into it and just go rolling forward head first wanting to know more. Um, when it comes to gaming, um, how you begin your game night for a uh, how you begin a particular story, uh, the the number of ways and variations are essentially infinite under the sun. But you've got to make it good in order to hook your players. Now, just as an example for you, a couple years back, I started running a steampunk high fantasy kind of setting for uh, a couple of my cousins. Now. It's a setting that I've been working with off and on for a couple of years. It's not 100% complete, but started put, testing it with them. Now, started off Battle of the Lowland, uh, Lowland Plains at the Sigurd Battleworks. Uh, so, war between uh, the Corvarian Empire, their dwarven allies, the dwarves of the Silver Spire Hold, and the orcs of Three Tusk Hold. Uh, the Three Tusk Hold being the original mountain home of the Silver Spire Dwarves. Now, it was early morning. My cousin's characters were thrown in as part of the auxiliary unit on the front lines in the immediate forward trench. And they're facing down the orcs, and the orcs had a picket line set up about midway in the fields between the two armies. They had a mission to go out with a couple of uh, engineers and set up a couple of traps, try to disrupt and and uh, disrupt and injure the battle formations of the orcs as they came forwards. And just that moment, that particular setting, you know, it's a crucial mi mission, high stakes. It's a war between nations. There's a lot riding on it, and it's a war that's lasted a couple of years. Boom! Information out people invested and ready to go. Obviously, running the story, I gave them a little bit more detail, a little bit more flair with it than that, but 
it gives you an example that you can work with that's just not the bog standard uh, um, bog standard uh, fantasy startup where you're in a tavern I, so many so many adventures have started in taverns in little towns it's uh, I mean, it's a classic and enjoy the classics but try to avoid some of the tropes if you can try to give your players something interesting something different and something new different and new go a long ways towards helping hook your players in now getting things started the, the hook at the beginning of a story can take uh, a fair bit of time especially for tabletop gaming it's not quite as quick as say you know a movie is or the start of a video game it uh, kind of depends a little bit on your players and their characters and uh, how spread out they all are at the start of the story uh, a couple of ways you can speed this up just so you can get the hook sunk deeper into your players faster is uh, by starting it off things off with your players characters knowing each other or at least most of them knowing each other or if they don't want to do that somehow it clashes with their uh, their backstory you know it's can be fairly easy to start them off in the same area again going back to the uh, steampunk fantasy setting that I laid out for you it was really easy to start the characters off together because I was able to roll them up as part of the same auxiliary unit for the Corvarian Empire um, little things like that can help just speed things up as as we've discussed now uh, not all hooks have to be action-packed they don't have to rely heavily on um, on just really intense action scenes with a lot of die rolling back and forth and characters being disemboweled beheaded and burnt to absolute bits of fine ash uh, can you can really make good hooks with just some great dialogue dialogue can be kind of tricky to get a handle on and make it interesting what we think of and what we have in our heads may sound badass but then you say it out loud and you realize ah oh, crap that was awful that was just goofy and horrendous but uh, dialogue and intrigue can really really help to set the tone uh, think of now not every not all of you may be, may be Quentin Tarantino fans but myself I am and for the start of most of his films the dialogue is just it really does a lot to pull you in um, Kill Bill it's a brief scene but that dialogue between the bride and Bill does a lot to uh, to set your mind going to get you drawn into what's happening um, heck there's a lot of instances uh, oh Inglorious Bastards that opening scene with Londa and the uh, uh, the French farmer and um, with Londa hunting down the uh, the Jews the Dreyfuses it's fantastic scene absolutely it just creates a certain amount of tension but it also shows you how intelligent and capable uh, an officer like Londa is and it just uh, it helps to set the stakes pretty high or at least it did for me um, you know and aside from the uh, dialogue and intrigue you can also make your hooks simply based off of uh, an introduction into the strange and the bizarre and different um, if any of you are penny arcade fans and uh, I'd highly recommend you go over and watch the Acquisitions Incorporated episodes. Specifically, watch Acquisitions Incorporated, the C Team. Their first episode, it's not got a lot of a lot of uh, full-on action with it, but they use a setting where the closer the characters looked, the more bizarre and off things were, and it really did a lot. I felt to. Uh, draw the players in and draw, drew me in as a viewer too just as they started pulling the threads on this location and started to find things were unraveling and unraveling kind of at a at a really quick pace but then after we have the beginning we of course come to the middle in the middle of the story your players their characters 
should have had to have uh, gone through a couple of different trials, a series of trials and different unique challenges. Um, there should be some work to get to this point. There uh, could be stuff like uh, research, intense dialogue options, uh, where they have to engage in a bit of diplomacy with people they're not sure that they can entirely trust. Um, and throw in some combat encounters there too. The kinds of challenges you throw at your players are going to be a bit dependent on what kind of a story it is you're looking to tell. Obviously a story of intrigue, cloak and dagger, it's not going to have a lot of direct combat, but it can have a lot of stealth and social encounters with a little bit of combat mixed in just to show the players that the stakes are deadly serious and absolutely real. Well, I say real, <laughs> but anyways. Um, once we get to the middle here, though, this is where, you know, you can really start to hammer home for your players just how dangerous and serious their opposition is. You can throw quite a bit more trouble at them. This beginning, let's say the players have been uh, dealing mostly with uh, a gang of bandits or a thieves guild. You know, they dealt with the bottom rung troops before, the rank and file, the newbies, but now now they've shown that they're capable. They're a cut above. So the bosses are starting to lay out more clever traps, getting prepared for the players, the characters to arrive, and bringing in some actual muscle, not just the rank and file guys, but heavy hitters that know exactly what they're doing, what their business is about. Um, and when you put all these things together, throw some complications into it, make things a bit interesting. Often as you go about and play, you can and should be using the player's actions and motivations to uh, help make this interesting and make uh, use these things as fuel. Um, just to give you another example, I uh, have still been playing with this, uh, this steampunk fantasy setting and uh, played it off and on with my cousins and another group of friends on occasion. And there's an instance where the players were hired to provide tasteful wedding security. And the wedding security was for a high nobility family within the Corvarian Empire. It was a union of two houses. The patriarch of the Maximilian clan was marrying off his daughter to the, uh, to the son of another clan. And when they went in to go meet with the uh, patron that had hired them, uh, the head of the clan, Lord Maximilian. Um, I had them roll, or the players asked, oh, do we recognize this family? And I said, I don't know, let's make a knowledge nobility check. Roll, roll it all up. Most of the characters kind of had failures. One, one player had an actual success, but one of my players, a guy named Tony, rolling a uh, gunslinger, rolled a one. Now, normally rolling a one is an automatic failure but this is where i encourage uh, dms and storytellers to be creative when it comes to rolling ones or or uh getting a critical glitch and it's uh, i presented him with some alternative information uh let's say i uh i told him no as a matter of fact you did not fail you actually know everything about this clan you know exactly who this is you have seen this symbol before and you know who these people are you know this because well you're a sullivan man proud clan powerful clan not one of the great clans of your nation but powerful enough that you and a couple of other mid-tier clans uh joined together and formed your own trade conglomerate and part of what was going to be putting your people on the map was negotiating a trade deal with the Maximilian family from the Corvarian Empire. This was going to be your uh, your trade conglomerate's ticket into the upper stratospheres of nobility and wealth. Everything was being done, signed, everything was negotiated properly. It was just all being sealed off with uh, a feast and drinks and celebration. And at that night, um, a Maxwell man forced himself on a Sullivan woman, your aunt, in fact. And there's been bad blood between the Sullivans and the Maximilians ever since. And he just went, oh. 
I think I would have just rather failed rather than have a critical critical failure here. So, but uh, it set the scene for something different and it introduced an interesting dynamic at this particular point in the story. This uh, tasteful wedding security thing was a side job that they were doing to raise funds for uh, a bigger mission that they had going. And that little bit right there adds in a complication. It's like, uh, is this guy going to be able to be able to do his job because he was going to be serving as a as a second for the best man in case any of the bride's other suitors showed up to try to disrupt the wedding. Well, most everything went off without too much of a hitch, but you can see how by seizing on that role of a critical one, a critical miss, I was able to throw in a little extra complication there and make things just a little bit more interesting, not only for the player, but for the party overall by putting this uh, side objective at risk and in question. Now, after we do all of that, all the side stuff, we get through the middle point of this particular story arc, we come up to the end. The ending should wrap up this story, whatever particular story it is you're telling at this point. Now not saying a story has to be over and done within one single game session. It can go a couple of game sessions. Just depends on how big of a story you want to tell. But any good story should have an ending. And I think that's a fundamental problem with uh, a fair number of different kinds of media, movies, books, that uh, people not knowing how to end things properly at, at a good point. Doesn't always have to be a happy ending, but a story needs to end. A particular arc needs to have a finish point. Um, again, let's take a look at, uh, at, the, at the original Star Wars trilogy. It's one long overarching story, but there are three separate adventures, three separate stories. They're all tied in together. Same thing, same ultimate end goal, freeing the galaxy from the grip of the empire of Emperor Palpatine, but they're still their own self-contained stories, and they all end, and they end at good points, too. Now, when it comes to a good ending, a good ending should tie up most of the loose ends. You can leave some of them in question, like, ah, crap, we had that guy captured, and he got away. And we beat him, but he still ended up escaping from us, uh, as long as most of the loose ends have been tied off and there's a clean cut ending to a story, I'd say you've done your job pretty well. Uh, at that point, it's just time to start distributing more of the rewards, but um, when it comes to ending a story, you don't always have to go over to distributing rewards to the players. Uh, players can lose in particular stories. They can have moments where Again, Empire Strikes Back, uh, Star Wars. Star Wars, the the uh, the characters, they didn't win. They just ended up surviving. And they came out of it all dinged up and banged up. Luke lost his hand, had to get it replaced with a uh, cybernetic attachment. It, uh, but it makes things a little bit more interesting because now the players have a chance. The char their characters have the opportunity. To bounce back and come from this this setback stronger than before they sur they lost but they survived it and they're coming back smarter better and more capable and uh, with a better knowledge of how their enemy operates and a better knowledge of what their enemy's strengths and weaknesses are and can use that to their advantage and you can use all of this to just make a much more interesting and a much better story overall. And speaking of ending things, really, I think I'm going to wrap this up here. I apologize for the shorter episode this time around, but this was kind of more of an addendum to the point of plots and NPCs. It's always good to know how a good story should go together. And it sounds really simple and easy, and for many of you, this is probably old hat. Uh, any good, Most people should know any good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. But keeping that in mind as you put this stuff together can be tricky. It can be hard to uh, come up with a clear and solid ending point. But um, 
you know it's always a good it's always a good idea to revisit your basics and come come and put everything together and make these better stories for your players and for yourself it can be a whole hell of a lot of fun having a story take shape for you i mean in the uh in the first part of this uh this uh, point of plots and NPCs, I kind of rambled on a little bit about a particular story with uh, a paladin and a cursed blade. And that was a lot of fun for me. I love doing stuff like this, and I know there's plenty of you out there that love doing stuff like this as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. Click the little bell icon so that way that you know uh, when I have new content being uploaded and coming on down the pipe for you all. I have been Jordan, your resident storyteller extraordinaire and master of lore. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good evening.